All right, y'all, we're going to replace the lower control arm and ball joint on my car. It's a 1995 Toyota Camry, third generation. First thing you want to do is remove the tire. Before you do that, you want to loosen the lug nuts. Just break them loose a little bit. Don't take them off before you raise the car on jacks. It's a 21 millimeter. Now that they're loose, jack the car up, remove the lug nuts and the tire. We're going to take the splash guard off because it makes it a lot easier getting the lower control arm out. 10 millimeter bolts. I'm going to put these bolts back in so we don't lose them. On my particular Camry and some of the third generation, like mine, you have to remove the sway bar end link or at least the lower fitting in order to get the lower control arm out because the lower fitting of the sway bar end link is attached to the lower control arm. We're going to take off both and just get this out of the way. If you're going to remove sway bar end links, whether to replace them or just to do the lower control arm, you want to raise both tires on the end of the car you're working on, front or rear. So we have the tire on the other side up off the ground. If you don't have the other tire up off the ground, there's going to be way too much tension on this sway bar. Once you bring that tire up off the ground on the opposite side you're working on, it releases the tension on this sway bar and that sway bar end link. I'm using a 16 millimeter wrench and a number five Allen hex socket. We're going to loosen these three bolts on the lower control arm first. One, two, and three. Just loosen them. There's 152 foot-pounds of torque on those bolts. Your sister's using her foot to do it. See that loosening? There you go. If you feel those bolts give, then you know you can loosen them. All right, y'all, to get the middle bolt, we have a 19 millimeter six-sided socket, a 10 inch long extension, it's a half inch. You need half inch tools to loosen these bolts. And a torque wrench, half inch torque wrench. Those are some tough bolts to get off because of location and what you have to work around. The farther you have to come out with extensions, away from that bolt to clear this area to get that bolt off. You have to hold up here with force going this way, right there, and down at the bottom, pulling, pulling this way. If you don't hold the torque wrench up here, pushing that way, while you're pulling this way, it's unstable. Another 19 millimeter bolt at the back of that control arm. 152 foot-pounds of torque on that. Sister's using a cheater bar, just some galvanized pipe. And she's cracking. All right, y'all, now we're gonna loosen one bolt and two nuts. We're gonna do it with a 17 millimeter. You all wanna use a six-sided socket on these things. Go, sister. Oh. Those are only on with 94 foot-pounds, so it's a lot easier. There she is using her foot again. All right, y'all, now it's time to remove the cotter pin from the castle nut up here on the ball joint. The head of the cotter pin is toward the front of the car. Sisters, removing that with some needle nose pliers. Just straighten it up right now, and I'm going to then give it a whack with the hammer a little bit. Half inch extension and a hammer to ease that cotter pin out. And there she is. Now we have to loosen the castle nut on top of that ball joint, y'all. It's a 19 millimeter. Okay. There you go. All right, y'all. 
that castle nut is coming up close against that CV axle. You can't loosen it anymore. So what you have to do is either shock it or you have to use a pickle fork to wedge it right down there on the ball joint so that you can pry that ball joint down and loosen that castle nut the rest of the way and take it off. That's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna use a pickle fork and a sledgehammer. Using a pickle fork to separate that ball joint. She gave, I believe. Sounds like she gave. Yep, she gave y'all. We borrowed these pickle forks from AutoZone. There's five of them. It says it's kit 56, power built. You have to play around to determine which one fits on your ball joint. Castle nut off. So see y'all, broke that ball joint loose and then you pry it down and get that castle nut off. Now she's removing the three 19 millimeter bolts on the control arm. There you go. All three are out. She's getting that lower control arm out of the back. There she comes, y'all. Lower control arm is out now with the ball joint attached because we're going to replace that. Now I'm going to take this to a machine shop. They're going to push out that bushing and put a new one in for me. Got it back from the machine shop. They did a nice job pushing the new bushing in, the donut bushing. This one was fine. Here's the new ball joint. It's Toyota part number 43330-39435. Comes with a new castle nut and cotter pin. This is the old ball joint. See the movement in it? Time to replace it. This one doesn't move. Now we're going to get to the business of putting this big bird in and her friend the ball joint. What you want to remember to do is to put this bracket back on the side that goes to the back of the car. This is the bolt that secures the donut bushing. This is the locking nut with a tab on it. You see that? That goes up on top of a shelf above this bushing. I'll show that to you in a minute. As you turn this bolt in, this tab will at some point come to stop. It's a little difficult to keep this locking nut in place as you're putting this bolt in to start it through that locking nut. So we take a 19 millimeter wrench and hold it in place. This tab will spin or turn until it comes to stop up against the side of that shelf up there. And I'll show you that shelf right now. This is the shelf I'm talking about right up here. This is where that bushing, that control arm goes into and the bushing sits. This is the shelf up here. This locking nut goes in place up there. And as you turn, because it's gonna be righty tidy, this tab will hit the side of this shelf and come to a stop. Until you get that bolt started through that locking nut, we recommend you take a 19 millimeter open end wrench. Keep it in place until that tab comes to stop up against the side of this shelf. Then you can continue tightening your bolt. Before we put our bolts back in, we check and make sure they'll go in easy. So this one didn't want to. And what I did was I took a little bit of silicone lubricant spray, put it in a container with a Q-tip and put it right here. I had wire brushed that off and even used a dental tool, but it's still a little rough. Goes in that hole right there. Now it goes in just fine. 
on the bolt that secures the donut bushing, same thing. It's a little rough here. I took a wire brush, cleaned it off. Still is a little resistant going through the nut. And I used a dental tool to go around the threads. Still a little resistant. So I used the silicone lubricant spray, just a little bit on a Q-tip, and put it right there so it eases in without resistance. Putting the lower control arm in. Back bushing first, the donut bushing. Sliding that in. Just wiggle that control arm around until the bolt goes through. Straight, there you go. All right, y'all, you see that bolt came through. We've put some wood there to hold that control arm. We're now going to take that bolt and drop it just a little bit so we can get that locking nut on top and start that bolt through it. Sister's using a socket to back that bolt off a little bit. There aren't any threads through the holes where that bushing goes, where the lower control arm goes. But there's tension up there, and that's why we're using a socket to back it off just a bit. All right, y'all. You see that bolt started through that donut bushing? You want that to be just a little bit above that shelf there, or what, it, or what that locking nut sits on. Because if you have it up higher and you try to put that locking nut on, it puts that locking nut up, positions it really high, and you don't want that. You want to get that locking nut as close to the surface as you can so that you can hold on to it, and that bolt will ease through it. So that's what Sister's going to try to do right now. She's positioning the locking nut around that hole above the bolt. See that little tab there, y'all? Now she's going to take the 19 millimeter wrench, open side, and put it around that locking nut so that while we're tightening the bolt, it'll hold it in place. Now that locking nut has the bolt going through it. It's level. See how flat that locking nut is to the surface of that shelf? That means you've got it on then. It takes a little bit of time to play with it and get it in place. So just be patient, work a little bit at a time. Screwdriver, needle nose pliers, 19 millimeter wrench, whatever you have to do to get that bolt going through that locking nut. Y'all see that? There you go. All right, y'all, that locking nut is now engaged and the tang is toward the back, up against the side of that upper shelf. It's engaged. And now what we're going to do is take that control arm, dip it under the rack and pinion arm here, and put that in place and get it back to those two holes where those bolts go in. The longer bolt of these two goes toward the back. All right, she's going to dip that lower control arm under the rack and pinion arm there. There you go. Swivel it around. There you go, y'all. In order to get that control arm lined up with those two bolt holes and to get your ball joint on and in place, you wanna keep this part of the lower control arm that attaches to the ball joint below this hole, whatever it's called, that the ball joint goes into. So pull that down. You can even push this around like that. Pull that lower control arm down and get it under this area where the ball joint goes through. Longer bolt to the back. Make sure that bracket's in place, y'all. Wiggle them around until they want to go in. So to get that bolt in, y'all need to jiggle the bracket around. The bracket that goes around that part of the lower control arm. Now we're going to tighten those bolts, but not torque them yet because we still have to put the ball joint in. We're putting the ball joint on now. You want to have your castle nut handy because as the threads of that ball joint come through, you want to put your castle nut on. Now we're putting the ball joint on. Castle nut goes on top. Get that started on there before you get these bolts engaged in that lower control arm. 
Sisters prying down the lower control arm. And the stub bolts are in. We got the stub bolts through. Castle nut tightened down enough. We'll fully tighten it here in a bit. You want to keep the castle nut away from the CV axle. Now we're going to tighten those nuts. Now she's putting the bolt in. Now we're going to tighten the castle nut and put the cotter pin through. For this castle nut, the torque on that castle nut is 90 foot-pounds. We don't have any tool that will torque that to 90 foot-pounds. So what we're going to do is tighten that bolt as tight as we can, but making sure that one of these windows on this castle nut, little windows right there, line up to that hole so we can put the cotter pin in. All right, y'all, that's as tight as we can get it. We have one of the windows on the castle nut lined up with the hole. We're gonna put that cotter pin in now. We're putting this cotter pin in with the head facing toward the front of the vehicle because that's the way we took it out. That's how we put that cotter pin on. We used some needle nose pliers to bend that top tang back and then just the end of an extension to pound the bottom one down. Now sister's going to torque the nuts and bolt from the lower control arm to the ball joint to 94 foot-pounds. 17 millimeter socket on a half inch torque wrench. Try to tighten each one evenly as you go. Control arm to ball joint, torque to 94 foot-pounds. All right, y'all, the torque on these bolts is 152 foot-pounds. We're going to be tightening with a half-inch torque wrench, six-sided socket, 19 millimeter, and a cheater bar right there. Make sure your locking nut is in place. All right, to torque this bolt, we have a 19 millimeter impact socket, 10 inch extension, three inch extension, and start out about there. We're gonna use cheater bar on that. That's it. We torqued that bolt, but it took both of us. So here's what we had to do. Sister was here pushing down this way on the head of that torque wrench, and I was at the back of this cheater bar pulling up. That's the force it took for us to torque that bolt. That's it. You put your sway bar in link back in, tighten the nuts. Put your splash guard back on. Put your tire on. Torque the lug nuts to 76 foot-pounds, and that's how you replace a lower control arm and a ball joint on a 1995 Toyota Camry, third generation. Hope it helps, and happy DIYing.